Hi, welcome to the first set of slides, HTML and Web Fundamentals. Sit back, relax, and we're going to discuss how the web works, the development process, workflow habits, and then later on we'll do an exercise to get to know some different HTML elements. First, let's talk about how the web works. And hopefully this will give you an idea of how what we're learning fits into the larger picture of the internet. We're going to talk about request and response, rendering in the browser, local versus remote, and some differences between front-end and back-end development. First, let's talk about request and response. So imagine that you are uh, sitting at home, and you get in front of your computer, and you say, I'd like to go to this website. So you type in the domain name into your browser, howstuffworks.com. And then you hit return, and your computer connects to the internet, and it talks to this guy over here, which is a DNS server. DNS stands for Domain Name Server. DNS servers are kind of like operators of the internet. They don't actually hold any website files, but they will tell you how to get to the specific computer, wherever it may be in the world. Um, so that way you can connect to it and then get the website files you're looking for. So DNS servers, they talk to other DNS servers all day long, and they're keeping track of um, associating a domain name with something called an IP address. Um, an IP address is very similar to the address that you have on your house. Um, it's basically a way of identifying the location of a computer, wherever it may be, anywhere in the world. Um, so any computer that's connected to the internet has an IP address. Even the computer that you're on right now has its own IP address. So when you type in HowStuffWorks.com, you ask the DNS server if it knows the address of that hosting server. And this domain name actually doesn't. It says, well, it's not in my database, so I'll ask another DNS server. And this one does know. It says, actually, yes, that's in my cache. That maps to the IP address 70.42.251.42. So this first DNS server says, thanks, I'll cache that information as well. In case someone asks me again in the future, then I'll know what to tell them. And it sends you that information. So now your computer knows the specific address of the server that you're trying to connect to. And that's this green arrow here is showing that connection between your local computer and this remote hosting server. And hosting servers, which are represented back here by these blue towers, these are the computers that are holding the actual web files, the content that is then being um, you know, downloaded to your computer and rendered in your browser. So whenever you have the IP address, you're making a request then to that specific hosting server, and it sends back a response. And this starts a conversation back and forth between your computer and the remote server. So you ask, um, you make an HTTP request, and you ask for something like the home page, and the server sends back a response in the form of content. And this is text code that is either HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So in this class, that's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn to write the HTML and CSS code, or the content that's passed back and forth between the remote server, the web server, and the viewer's browser. Let's talk a little bit about local versus remote now. So the term local refers to the computer that's in front of you right now. Local computer is something that you can touch um, that's right before your eyes. And that's opposed to remote, where remote refers to a web server that's at a remote location somewhere else in the world. So whenever we're um, you know, producing, whenever we're in our, our production phase, we're always working on our local computer, and we're previewing it in our browser on our computer. So we're working locally, we're previewing it locally in the browser, checking our work. This way, we can make sure everything is exactly the way that we want it before we publish it and put it up onto a remote server. So you're building your website on your computer. You're writing HTML and CSS code. You're previewing that code in your browser. And you're making sure everything looks the way you want. Maybe you're correcting typos, changing colors, things like that. Then you decide, OK, I'm ready to put this up on the, the remote server. So then we're going to use a process called FTP, 
which is file transfer protocol to put those files or upload them onto the web server. And now, because this web server has a specific domain name and IP address associated with it, people from all over the world now can view and access those files. And then at any point, if you'd like to change or modify those files, you can always get them down off of that web server so you have the newest copy on your local machine as well. And you can do that by downloading or getting the files, bringing them back to your local computer. Let's talk a bit about the differences between front-end web development versus back-end web development. So in this class, we're going to be doing front-end web development only. We're going to be learning to write these first two, which is HTML and CSS. Now the main difference is that these front-end program programming languages, um, or actually I guess we should say markup languages, HTML and CSS, are all being rendered client-side, which means that they're being rendered in your browser. Your browser is interpreting that code and then rendering it, which allows the website to appear. Now that's in contrast to back-end web development, where all of the programming languages on the back-end are being interpreted by the server on the server side. So for example, Ruby, PHP, Python, Java, and Node, which is a version of JavaScript on the server, <clears throat> all of these programming languages are working to update objects, um, you know, interact with a database, and eventually render the HTML and CSS files that are then passed to the front end, that are passed to your browser. So that's the main difference between front end development and back end development. So as you start out to make your own projects, a good start to um, creating any website is a brainstorming process. So along the way, feel free to grab a piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, and just start sketching out the ideas of what you want to build before you actually start to code. A lot of people like to make a flow chart or a flow diagram where you basically map out what pages will exist and how those pages will link to other content. This is a good example of a hand-drawn mock-up. So you can also take and um, draw out the individual pages and sort of make decisions about where content will go. And um, this is going to save you a lot of time because instead of having to move code around or add or remove code, you can make up your mind about the overall layout and what content you'd like to exist on a piece of paper. Um, and it's a lot faster to erase something or redraw it than to make a lot of changes in your code. So I think it's a good idea before you start any project to kind of make a mock-up of what you think that uh, the site pages will hold and sort of where you imagine that you'll be positioning this content. There's also digital mock-ups you can make online. Uh, one site I like is called Mockingbird and these sites will allow you to make mock-ups that are perhaps more suitable um, if you need to present this information to a client before you start coding. There's even templates um, and mock-up sites specifically for tablets and mobile devices as well. One of the first things you want to make sure when you get started on any new project is to create a folder that's dedicated to just that website or that web project. And we're always going to keep all of our files and subfolders that are related to that site in that folder. So we always call that a parent folder or a root folder. Um, this one here is named site. Normally you'll name this whatever the name of your project is. For example, if I was building a website for a waffle factory, I might call this folder something like wafflefactory.com or something like that. Now inside of this main parent folder or root folder, this is where all your subfolders will be. All of your images for your website will be nicely organized into a folder. Um, any special fonts you might be using could be organized there as well. All of our CSS, which is going to be the style of our website, is going to be located in a folder. And all of our web pages, our HTML pages, will also be inside that main parent folder there. And this will keep everything nice and organized. Um, and we're going to try and avoid ever having a file for our website existing outside of that main folder. So in the next exercise, we're going to 
jump in and talk about HTML syntax. Um, we're going to look at document structure of building a basic page. We're going to learn to create text elements and we're going to learn to create images and then links between our pages. So go ahead and move on to the first exercise. Um, feel free to browse the rest of these slides using the PDF link below and it'll have content that will review um, all of the things we go over in the exercise. Thanks.